become the State Center Chancellor on March 18th. You started off uh, being uh, in your bachelor's in international affairs. That's How true. How did you end up as chancellor? How? You may not have enough time on this tape to, to <laughs> go over that, but um, yeah, it, was a, it was a real fun journey for me. Um, I did get a degree from the United States Air Force Academy in international affairs. Later on, I got to teach political science when I was at Oregon State University. Uh, I taught uh, international affairs there. But I got my master's degree when I first went into the Air Force in guidance and counseling psychology. Mm -hmm. And then I was a, a, a treatment officer for helping people recover from uh, substance abuse for about 10 years. And then uh, I ran a program for methadone maintenance for heroin addicts for two years as a supervisor. Mm -hmm. So that led me then to, and then I went to Oregon State and I was um, an instructor, uh, associate professor at Oregon State University. Uh, teaching ROTC, teaching international affairs, and uh, using my master's degree for counseling students. And then uh, decided I needed to get a doctorate, so I pursued my doctorate. Then I went to the Community College of the Air Force and was a program director there. And then I ended up my career at the Pentagon uh, in the United States Air Force. Uh, and then uh, got out of the Air Force, but I was teaching all along, so I had a lot of opportunity. I, I taught uh, mathematics, I taught psychology, and um, international affairs. And what are some of the most pressing uh, issues facing college students today, and how would you address them as chancellor? Okay. Well, I think some of the most uh, pressing issues are having more of our students complete, and uh, more of our students come prepared to college. And so uh, actually, the event that I'm attending today is to do some of those things. We have, uh, I don't know how many people, probably, um, probably 80 or 90 people in the room. Uh, and they are uh, business leaders, and they're college leaders, and uh, community members. And they're talking about our students, and what do they need, and what's our mission, and what's our vision for, for our students being successful. So what other changes are you committed to making? Uh, changes. I want to get to know everyone first before I start making any sweeping changes. Um, people are doing a great job. This is a great district. We're serving uh, about 50,000 students um, in, a, in, a, in an area that's the size of Connecticut, the state of Connecticut, 5,500 square miles. And, uh, and so there's, there are a lot of challenges. And we have a lot of students that aren't coming to college. And we've got to build more capacity, uh, better facilities. Uh, is it crowded at... Uh, um, yes. Fresno City College? Yes. I know that. So that's a rhetorical question. And, uh, and we've got to deal with that overcrowding. And we need to serve more people with the great education that we have. And to do that, we need to not only build facilities, but hire more staff and faculty to do that. Given that you are aware of the many disadvantages of an adjunct teacher, they are, they are an issue for FCC students due to the lack of benefits. What do you plan to do about improving the work conditions for adjunct teachers? Well, adjunct uh, teachers are uh, really important. They're, they're, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a, a plus and a minus, a uh, yin and a yang. Our, the, the reason community colleges' costs can be kept so low is because of adjunct teachers, but it's not fair to them. We try to offer the highest pay that we can. But, so this is really a legislative issue more than it's a local issue, because right now we're not getting paid the same as our friends at Cal State Universities or the UC Riverside's and so that's why they have more full-time faculty ratios to part-time ratios and and why our pay is, is uh, lower but we're always concerned about our adjunct, adjunct faculty because they teach a lot of our courses for our students so we want the best and it's something that I would carry forward to our state legislators actually more than local because local you only have so much money mm -hmm. and you and you use it as wisely as you can you try to pay people as much as you can but it's a limited budget mm -hmm. but I really am honored to be the chancellor of uh, State Center Community College District and uh, people have been so gracious so far and I'm, I'm not even here yet but people have welcomed me they want to talk to me and I want to meet as many people as I can I was just brainstorming with some of our staff about how can I get out to the campuses and meet the students and staff and faculty and on a, a, a small group level, uh, try to meet people, see what people's concerns are. And I don't have great promises. I, I, I try not to overpromise, but we can do a lot if we work together and if we talk about the issues. So I would tell students, um, stay, you know, hang in there. Uh, don't give up. Too many of our students, I think, uh, I've heard stories about students driving to the parking lot of our colleges and getting and seeing all the people and then just leaving and never coming back. I want people to stay 
I want them to get the education that they need so they can get jobs like Carlos says here, <laughs> like, like, you know, like you're trying to do. Uh, people need to have this kind of experience, connection, and it's going to make our society, our communities better. Um, it, it's, it's a mission and it's a fun, it's fun work. It's, it is work. It's, we have a lot of hard work. So I'd say get involved and then come back and be one of the professors at, at colleges that, um, that I'm uh, the chancellor for right now.